Hey guys, this is Landon with the Command Valley, bringing you another Commander deck tech. Thank you to GameGrid for sponsoring our channel, and if you want to check out their new and improved store and support the channel while doing so, you can check out the link in the description below. We will have a copy and pasteable list in the description that you can paste right into their deck builder and buy your singles there. If you want to support the channel directly, you can head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandvalley to sign up today. So, call time spoilers are officially done, and we have seen the deck lists for the new pre-constructed decks that are coming out alongside Kaldheim. So for today's episode, I'm going to be doing a pre-constructed deck upgrade guide for the Elven Empire deck. As the title of the deck suggests, this is an elf tribal deck, and it's super interesting because this is green black, whereas most of the elf decks that we've seen in the past are mono green. So adding black to the mix really does open up a ton of strategies and a bunch of new possibilities for the elf tribe. Now, recently I did a deck tech on the Abomination of Lanoir, which came out in Commander Legends, and that was a super fun deck, and I actually really loved playing that deck. It's one of the few decks that I've built for the channel throughout the year that I've actually kept and maintained, and it's kind of a shame that they've so quickly, after releasing the Abomination of Lanoir, printed just an almost better green-black elf commander, because I was kind of getting a little attached to the Abomination of Lanoir, and I'm actually really glad to see the Abomination of Lanoir in the final list for this deck, so that's super cool. Cool. So let's get into it. The commander for this deck is Lathriel, Blade of the Elves. She is a legendary creature, Elf Noble, that costs two, a black, and a green. She has a bunch of super powerful abilities. She has Menace, and whenever she deals combat damage to a player, we can make that many 1-1 green elf creature tokens. That is super powerful. If we do four damage with her, if we can, you know, buff her up a little bit, we're going to be making a ton of tokens every time she attacks. But really, her strongest ability is her activated ability that lets us tap her and 10 other elves that we control to make each opponent lose 10 life. And we are going to gain 10 life. That is an absolutely absurdly powerful ability stapled on to an elf tribal commander. And it is powerful for two reasons. The first is her first ability, making tokens, feeds the second ability. So she has the pay off and the means to get to the payoff. So I, I think that's absolutely brilliant and I think that this is a super wonderful elf tribal commander. If you are new to commander or are recently getting back into commander, Wizards of the Coast has recently been releasing two 100 card pre-constructed commander decks alongside the standard set, starting with Zendikar Rising. And we have been super impressed with these decks. When they first came out in Zendikar Rising, we were a little skeptical when we saw the initial deck lists. We thought that they looked a little bit underpowered, but through playtesting with them, we realized that they are really, really, really strong out of the box and very well built. That has rung true with Zendikar Rising, Commander Legends, and also with Kaldheim. I was super impressed with the list that was given to us. And it's not to say that the normal five commander decks that we usually get every year are underpowered. It's just when we saw that they were only releasing two alongside the standard set, we were kind of figuring that they would be along the level of the Planeswalker decks, which kind of feels like that this is the replacement product for that. But honestly, it's been the opposite. And these upgrade guides have actually proven to be a little bit more difficult than I anticipated because it's really hard to make cuts out of a deck that already is pretty concise and pretty optimal. However, I will say that it does seem that this elf deck is a little bit more watered down than a lot of the other precons that they've made, simply because the elf tribe is such a powerful and well-supported tribe in Commander. We have a super deep card pool dating back to the beginning of Magic, and they're, seriously, there are just so many powerful elves that I really think they had to make this deck a little bit slower, otherwise it would have just completely we blown the other deck out of the water. So with all that preamble out of the way, I'm going to get into the cards I am taking out of the deck first. Now I'm just going to quickly just read through the cards that I'm taking out. I'm not going to spend too much time on them. Basically, if I cut them from the deck, it means that they were either A, too much mana for the ability that they offered, or B, they did not have as much synergy with the deck as some of the other cards that I'm putting in. I'm really focusing on that first ability that makes a lot of tokens, so I have put many ways in the deck of pumping up our commander so we can make as many tokens as possible. So we're cutting Jespera Sentinel, Null Mage Shepherd, Voice of many ruthless winnower twin blade assassins voice of the woods wolverine riders risk the exiled roots of wisdom poison the cup ambitions cost 
Lis Alana Scarblade, Elvish Rejuvenator, Path of Ancestry, Jungle Hollow, Pride of the Perfect, and Terragrid's Shadow. Like I said before I was listing off these cards, I honestly feel like they just either cost too much mana for what they provide, or they're just not as synergistic with the deck as I really want them to be. And rather than spend a lot of time picking out and nitpicking all of the things about these cards, I'd rather focus that time on explaining the cards that I'm putting in. So the first category of cards I'm putting in are just honest to goodness mana dorks. That was the first thing that I noticed when I looked at this deck was the mana curve was fairly high and missing a lot of those one drop mana dorks. And why those one drop mana dorks are so important is if we can get one of those down on turn one or even turn two, we can get our commander out on turn two or turn three if we have some more ramp. And that is super important for this deck because we need to get Lathriel out quickly as possible and start beating face. All right, so we're gonna be putting in Elves of Deep Shadow, which can tap for a black mana, Findhorn Elves, which can tap for a green mana, and Llanowar Elves, which can also just tap for a green mana. We're then putting in Priest of Titania, which I was shocked to not see this in already. You will never see any Elf Tribal deck without this and probably a lot of the other cards that are going to be on this list. And Priest and the Priest can tap to add green for mana pool for each Elf on the battlefield. Now, the fact that it does not care about just our Elves is really important for one of the other cards that I'm going to mention later. Needless to say, this has a ton of synergy with our commander. The more tokens that our commander makes, the more mana Priest of Titania is going to be able to make us. I'm also putting in a Burt's Lore Rangers. It's kind of a more obscure mana dork. So it has an activated ability that lets us tap two of our untapped elves that we control to add one mana of any color to our mana pool. Now this doesn't generate any mana by itself if it's the only elf that we have, but it can give us a ton of mana the more elf tokens that we are producing, which is a huge aspect of this deck. The next elf I'm putting in is not necessarily a mana dork, but it is wood elves. When it enters a battlefield, we can search our library for a forest and put it directly onto the battlefield and shuffle your library. I am swapping this in straight across for the Elvish Rejuvenator card. They cost exactly the same amount of mana, except for the Elvish Rejuvenator only looks at the top like four or five cards of your library, whereas this can tutor up throughout your whole deck and it puts into play untapped, whereas the Rejuvenator makes it enter the battlefield tap. So I just kind of feel like that was a really easy swap. The next card I'm putting in is Azuri Renegade Leader. Now Azuri is a really special elf for me. This was the very first commander deck that I ever built. I bought the mono green precon that it came in from Target when I was in high school and I love that deck so much and I love Azuri. I think he belongs in the deck so he for a green mana can regenerate another target elf and then for two and three green we can give all of our elves trample and plus three plus three until end of turn. He really is like kind of the complete package. He can protect our elves and he can pump them up so we can swing in for the win. In addition to him just being you know one of my pet cards and being all around good in most elf decks I feel like he has even more synergy with our commander because the stronger our commander gets the more elves she's going to make which in turn equates to more damage that we're going to be dealing in subsequent turns next up i'm adding in immaculate magistrate which is seriously so perfect in this deck it has an activated ability that taps and we can put a plus one plus one counter on target creature for each elf that we control so we can make our commander very 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 big and make a lot of elves and then make our commander even more big it's seriously so perfect next up is a little elf that i am so excited it found the perfect home it is copperhorn scout it is a card that i have been putting in all of my elf decks but i haven't seen it in a lot of others when it attacks we can untap each other creature that we control now most of the time i've used this as kind of a way of honestly making more mana you can tap your mana dorks down your elvish arch druid your priest of titania attack untap them all and get even more mana but where this really shines in this deck is with our commander's last activated ability that we can tap it to make each of our opponents lose 10 life so we can tap everything make our opponents lose all the life attack with the copper horn scout untap our whole army and do it again being able to activate our commander twice in one turn sapping away half of our opponent's life in one go is so much much power packed onto a one green mana creature. The final elf I'm putting into the deck is Gerard Golgari Lichlord. He gets plus one plus one for each creature card in our graveyard and there is a slight graveyard theme in the deck. There are ways in the deck of getting creatures from our graveyard back into play and some of our elves really care about dying so that's some good synergy right there. But he has an activated ability for one a black and a green we can sacrifice another creature and each opponent is going to lose life to the sacrificed creature's power. Now I think that this is really good in the deck because we are planning on making our commander as big as possible to make as many tokens as possible to tap them down to drain our opponents out and if we just are on that turn and we didn't quite have enough to wipe out all of our opponents at once or maybe get rid of one problematic opponent Gerard for three mana can really get the job done sacrificing our huge commander and draining the whole table for a bunch 
Now that I've got the elves taken care of, we're adding in 10 elves total, which I feel like is a good amount. The deck already had a lot, so I think that's a, a good place to start. I'm gonna be going over the instants and sorceries. So I am putting Beast Within in place for Poison the Cup. And I just feel like Beast Within is just an all around better version of Poison the Cup. So really easy swap. I'd like to add in Vitalize as well as a, another addition of the Copperhorn Scout. So for one mana at instant speed, we can untap all of the creatures that we control. This has so much utility. We can swing out and hold this up to untap our army to catch somebody unawares and block with our whole army when they were not planning on it. We can attack with everything and untap and then activate our commander to you know drain our opponents out for 10 or we can tap our whole board to our commander untap it and do it again or we can use this as a ritual tap down all of our mana dorks untap them all because it's only cost of one mana to do so tap them again to add a bunch more mana to our mana pool i mean this has so much synergy in the deck for just one green mana speaking of one mana utility spells i'm also adding in wirewood pride for one green mana at instant speed target creature is going to get plus x plus x until end of turn where x is the number of elves in play so Again, this is a super powerful ability for just one generic mana. This could equate to the creation of 15, maybe even 16 elves in one turn. Also, our opponents are going to have to be worrying about commander damage because we are planning on getting our commander absolutely swole. So this is just another way of either killing somebody with commander damage or making so many elves that we can just tap our commander on a later turn and drain everybody out. So I love this card in the deck. Now moving into the sorceries, uh, these are mostly in here just to give us a little bit more card draw and round out the edges of the deck. So we've got a split card from Amonkhet with Driven to Despair. So it's got a aftermath half, which is the last half and a normal half. And we can only cast the aftermath half from the graveyard. So the first part is driven and until end of turn, creatures you control gain trample. And whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, we get to draw a card. With how many elves are playing and how good elves are at supporting each other and making each other huge, this can equate to a ton of cards in our hand. And the aftermath half is until end of turn, creatures you control gain menace. And whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card hard which is absolutely brutal so we can very easily cast this from our hand and before we go to combat still in our main phase cast the despair half and total that's only four mana so four mana to give all of our creatures menace trample and whenever they deal combat damage to a player we get to draw a card and make all those opponents that were hit discard cards i just that's so much utility on a four mana spell and even if we only cast one half the driven half i still think it's good enough to be in the deck next up we are playing lead the stampede which lets us look at the top five cards of our library and we can reveal any number of creature cards from among them put them right into our hand and the rest go on the bottom of our library in any random order this is going into the deck in place of roots of wisdom which is a kind of a weird spell one in a green we mill some cards and we can return a land or a creature from our graveyard to our hand otherwise we draw a card it's okay but i feel like lead the stampede just has a way higher ceiling we can get way more creatures into our hand it's just more explosive and then we are playing shamanic revelation and i've also put in this if you do have a little bit more, more money for the budget i think guardian project would probably be a little bit better but as it is a little bit more pricey shamanic revelation is going to let us draw a card for each creature we control the upside is if we have a bunch of creatures we're going to be drawing a bunch of cards whereas guardian project we can slam it down and draw a ton of cards throughout the game guardian project helps us rebuild whereas shamanic revelation capitalizes on what we have been building on and it's a little bit bad after a board wipe but i've had really good success with shamanic revelation and a lot of my elf decks so i feel like it's a good include here and finally for the last sorcery i'm putting into the deck is sylvan offering now this is the card i was referring to when i said that priest of titania and a couple other elves in the deck actually get a lot better with elves our opponents control so we get to choose an opponent us and that opponent are each going to put an xx green tree folk creature token onto the battlefield then we can choose another opponent it can be the same one if we want but you and that player each put x11 green elf warrior creature tokens onto the battlefield so ideally with this card we are going to be taking way more advantage out of those elves than our opponents and also with priest of titania and timber watch elf and wirewood chandler they really don't care about just the elves we control but really all the elves so we can take way more advantage of those elves than our opponents can so so super powerful card in the deck.
And the last card I'm putting into the deck is an artifact, which is interesting to put in an elf deck, and it is Throne of the God Pharaoh. It is a two mana artifact, and at the beginning of our end step, each opponent is going to lose life equal to the number of tap creatures we control. If we look at our commander's ability, and we look at we have to tap 10 elves to get 10 damage, it would follow suit that Throne of the God Pharaoh is an additional ability or activation of our commander at the end of our turn. So if we tap 10 elves, we have Throne of the God Pharaoh out, our opponents are going to end up taking 20 life in our turn rather than just 10. And that could also be much more if we happened to tap down even more elves in combat or mana dorks. So Throne of the God Pharaoh coming down early is very bad news for our opponents and can help us win the game very quickly. And with that, those are the 18 cards that I'm putting into the deck and the 18 cards that I'm taking out of the deck. It might drive some people crazy that I'm just two cards away from 20, but honestly, it was really hard to even get to this point. So I felt like that was a good place to stop without altering too much of the deck strategy. And with that, this episode is coming to a close. Really appreciate all of our subscribers and viewers and patrons that have been watching our content, interacting with us in the comment section and all of the other support that you guys have been giving us. We really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed this deck as much as I did. Elves hold a super deep place in my heart as it was the first commander deck I ever built and really the reason why I got into magic. So I love elves and I love this deck. I'm super excited to build it. And just a couple quick reminders here in the close. If you are interested in becoming a patron and supporting our channel directly, you can head on over to patreon.com slash command value. It supports us directly. You get access to exclusive content, our discord, our merch, and a bunch of other perks. Another quick reminder, if you are interested in purchasing any of the fine and powerful cards in this list or any of the new cards from Call Time, you can head on over to Game Grid through the link in the description and purchase those cards. It supports the channel and it supports Game Grid and we appreciate it. Another quick reminder that our handle for social medias are Command Valley P1 and you can go ahead and like us on Facebook, share us with your friends and links for all of that will be in the description below. Again, one more huge thank you to everybody that watched this video. We really appreciate it and I hope you guys have a wonderful week.